Okay, so the piece is ready for paint. Let me tell you what I've done up to this point. So obviously, this section from the roll top desk has been removed. There are two of these. This is just one. And in removing it, there's a lot of damage that can happen uh, if the wood is really old. It's not going to want to move, depending on the, the way that it was attached to the main piece. So some damage can happen, which is what happened right up here. When we disconnected it, a chunk of this wood came out. So we repaired it with Bondo. Bondo is actually auto body filler, which sounds funny, but it works wonderfully. It just gives you this funny pink salmon kind of color. You fill it in, you let it dry, and then you sand it just like you would wood putty. Um, I just think it's more durable. I've read a lot about it, and it doesn't have the problems that wood putty can have with cracking and that kind of thing. So the next step then, after all the repairs were finished, and you'll notice that the top is missing. Uh, I have something about that coming soon. Um, but uh, you'll see that I've got it all sanded down really nice and smooth, especially where I had to do the repairs. And I, after sanding, I cleaned it really well uh, with a microfiber cloth and a mixture of Simple Green. I love that cleaner. It's very biodegradable. Um, it doesn't damage your hands. And it's just a great, it has a great smell too, so it helps to clean that part of the old furniture. And now I'm ready for paint. So I've mixed up Miss Mustard Seed Milk Paint in Typewriter. That's the dark black that she offers. That's what my client wanted. These are, this is a custom order for someone. So I've got my paint mixed up. And let me just mention, I like to, I, you have to stir it continuously while you're using it. You know, you paint a little, you stir a little, you paint a little, you stir a little. And when I'm mixing up my paint, I have found these artist brushes. This is kind of the, you know, the cheapy ones that you get at Walmart. But the bristles are nice and short, and I can really mash up the little um, bits of uh, milk paint that are in the bottom. So I can get a really good stir. So I stir the paint really well. And then I'm using a zebra brush. Love these brushes. I love this short handle brush. It's easy to hold. These are really easy to clean and I use these brushes always. I love these brushes. And then we just start to paint. And I'm going to paint over the section with the Bondo first. And look at that. It just covers it right up, doesn't it? It's wonderful. So, you know, I made a little mistake that I don't typically do, but sometimes I do. And what I did here was I started painting the outside panels first. I really like to start with the inside panel when I'm painting any kind of panel furniture. So let me go back and start in the place that I should have started. This angled brush is great. You can see it's got that angle, and I can get up into the little corners and nooks and crannies of this. And you'll see that the paint is thin. I love that the paint is thin, especially in areas like this down here, where um, I can just kind of tap, 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 and that paint goes right into all those little hidden spaces. I want to mention about repairs. Um, this roll top desk is well over a hundred years old. It's very old. The wood was very dry when we got it and it had had a lot of use. Someone sat at this desk and did a, got a lot of work done. But one of the sections or several areas on this cabinet um, were cracked in the panel. See that long crack right there? You can kind of see it there. I chose not to replace all those for me, or replace them or repair them. For me, some of that adds character to the piece. It helps to tell the story and the age of the piece. So I mix my paint in between brush strokes every couple of minutes. And I'm going to work my paint into that crack. There we go. 
the black covers over this dark oak just wonderfully. I love it. The other thing that I love about this milk paint is some of you might be scared, like, oh no, she's covering oak. But honestly, this milk paint, is, paint is, has that thin consistency, so the grain of the wood shows through in a new way. It's, it's really quite lovely when you look at it up close. See how deep this cabinet is. This is the front of the cabinet. This is the back. So this is the side. These um, these pieces make great nightstands, or even I like the idea even better um, to use them on the side side tables next to a sofa, because you figure the arm of the sofa can be about that deep. The sofa can be pretty deep, so this would be a great piece next to your sofa could use the cabinet or the drawers on the front that open in the front, you know, you hide all the goodies, the remote controls, the magazine that you look at while you're watching TV, you know, that kind of thing. In my case, that would be um, the stacks of books that I seem to like to have near me. My journal, my art, my art supplies, I could hide it all right next to that because I seem to do a lot of that while I'm watching TV. At night. containers that I use for milk paint are from, I'm sure you can't see the label, but they're from uh, Talenti Ice Cream. One of my favorite ice creams, although they come in this really small container, I think I could just sit there and eat the whole container at once. But they're great for the milk paint. They have plastic screw on lids, so when I have to put on the second coat later today, I can just put the lid on it and set it on the shelf and then it'll be ready for me when um, when I'm ready to put the second coat of paint on. Now I was talking about repairs. I did not repair every little mark on this dresser. To me, it's important to leave um, a bit of the character to show the age of the piece. So you'll see there's a section up here that I could have put Bondo on, but I chose not to, and right here as well. And then all along down here, this is actually a hole that was used to connect this section to another section of the roll top desk. And I wanted to leave that. I don't want to completely hide the story of this piece. I want people to know or wonder, how did she do that? Where did that come from? Was this another piece of furniture? So you can really see that hole down at the bottom. And let me mention, these little artist brush that, that I, brushes that I use to stir are also really good to get into the little nooks and crannies. And I've already got it ready to go with paint. See, there's another place that this little brush comes in handy. Just squish some paint in there and lay it out like that. looking so good. You can't go wrong with this uh, typewriter paint. It's just such a pretty look. Now at this point, I don't know if my client wants any kind of distressing. So when I mixed up the paint, I added the bonding agent to it because um, I, I really don't think that my client wants a lot of distressing, so she would not want that chippy look. If you don't add the, the bonding agent, this paint chips really beautifully, provided you haven't sanded your piece too much. Now, if you sand your piece a lot, you're not going to get the chippy look. The chippiness happens because there's a bit of a resist there. Whether the resist is something that you've applied, like wax, 
or an oil on the surface before you paint, or the shine that is naturally on furniture from the old finish. So if there's still a bit of shine there from the old finish, it, that will act as a resist and you'll get a lot of the chippiness happening. So these are some decisions you have to make before you start painting the piece. I mean about this paintbrush I'm able to hold this paintbrush at any angle I can hold it this way when I'm down low I can hold it because the handle fits right in the palm of my hand and there we go that's the first coat of paint I will be putting another coat of paint on when this one completely dries, it's a little chilly out in my garage and my workshop. You can tell I've got layers of clothes on. So it might take a little longer for this layer of paint to dry. If it's the summer, uh, it will dry really fast. And you can practically start the second coat by the time you end the first coat. That's not going to be the case here. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of the, the piece and let it dry and I'll put the second coat on.